What is up, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, if you are on the YouTubes, welcome. Thank you for watching this. Um, this is episode two of a VR talk show that I'm doing live on Twitch right now. Um, on twitch.tv slash nightfire with two E's. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a whole lot of stuff. There has been a shit ton of things that have been going on in the uh, VR world or just over the past week. A lot of excellent new games and uh, a ton of really interesting conversations kind of being struck up on Twitter, Reddit, kind of everywhere that we'll also kind of touch on uh, and talk about. Um, we'll then look at some new and upcoming games that I'm pretty excited about diving into. And uh, that'll be it for the stream. We have a slew of games that uh, we played on stream over the course of the week. Um, all fantastic. And I want to start off by discussing probably the hottest VR game and along, since Resident Evil. Um, Rick and Morty, a virtual Rickality. This game has brought some... Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I guess we need to make this a scroll. <laughs> we haven't had a, a, a <coughs> name long enough. I can eat it. Uh, it's coming towards my face. <laughs> Rick and Morty, a virtual Rickality. Uh, I had just nothing but an absolute blast playing this game. Um, it continued to surprise me throughout the entirety of it, and it was exactly what I wanted. Uh, out of a VR title. Um, there's spoilers, I guess, if you haven't played the game. Well, we're gonna be, I'm just gonna have this kind of playing, and so there's gonna be some, uh, you know, gameplay that you may not have experienced already or whatnot, but, uh, the game is just so well crafted. Uh, it has all these, I mean, this, this combination machine is ridiculous when you think about it. It's one component of the game. So, to start off, Rick and Morty VR, uh, basically it starts you off in the living room. Um, and I had a moment in there where it was just like, this is incredible. I'm in the living room of Rick and Morty, a series that I've watched probably three to four times, you know? I've watched every single episode uh, three or four times. Let's do this. Let's pause this and just have this gently playing. Can we do that? A little too loud? Yeah, I think it's too loud. Um, and so, I was just already like so enamored and and in love with the game just by being in, just like be, by being in the living room, you know? Because it's like, it was like one of those experiences that gets released, uh, whether it's for, uh, what is this music, by the way? All right, that's a little better. Um, whether it's for, what is it? There have been a few experiences released that are like, hey, you can go to the Super Mario World, um, you know, and you can be in uh, Jerry's living room, you know? Uh, there are these experiences that people love, but they're not games, right? And people sometimes charge for them, sometimes don't. That was just it right there with the living room. Then you go into the actual game, and it, the and majority of it occurs... Actually, I don't even know. I w I'd say the majority of it occurs uh, in this garage area here that you see. Um, well, one thing I should mention is when you're in the living room, there's an option to turn on a, uh, a camera, and that's what I'm using right here uh, in this footage. Uh, you can turn on a camera, and that allows you to place it anywhere you want uh, throughout the world. Um... And so that was one of my first options I went for because, you know, I wanted to, I, I immediately kind of recognized we could have some fun with the production value of it. Um, we could kind of horse around and, and, uh, and maybe do some interesting angles, kind of make a little bit of a show with it, have some fun. And, 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 and I totally did. I loved, I loved that spectator camera. I wish it was in way more games. Uh, I wish it was an option at least, you know, especially for these games that are single player based. I would just love to have, the ability to have a spectator cam like that, uh, something that I can sw either sw just switch views between or actually grab like that and then maneuver around in my play space. Um, it was really interesting. 
Uh, and this is actually so the physics. The we'll, we'll keep talking about the. We'll go back to the garage, but the physics in this game are fantastic. Alchemy absolutely nailed it with the physics. Okay, everything. Flo I mean, it. Everything interacts with everything. Uh, I, you know, everything shatters. Everything shatters when you throw it on the ground. It breaks when you hit it. Um, you know, it, it. They stack on top of each other, and when you go into outer space, the physics are actually really impressive. Um, and I forgot completely uh, about the physics as soon as I stepped out here, and that they would apply to the camera. I'm in outer space. <laughs> oh no! Chat! Chat, no! Chat, I didn't mean to leave you! No! Everybody on? Good! <sighs> Chat! <laughs> <laughs> So I let go of chat, I'm sorry. and it floated away into oblivion, and I couldn't get it back because the physics of the in outer space. When I went to release it, I was moving, and I released, and the thing <laughs> just drifted off. And so this is it. Uh, when you is is one of the angles you can set it in. I didn't know you could change the angle at this time, and so that's me re sitting in there and then reaching up for the camera. And you can see it's kind of, uh, it kind of. Uh, Makes some interesting, some really interesting perspectives. You know what I mean? Some, some, some really stupid stuff. Uh, that you end up like that you can kind of record and 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 mess around with. Um, but this game, I mean, this like the whole cinematic, ex the whole experience behind it. When you get to the end of it, the whole reveal of the storyline. It was, I loved the stuff, I thought it was hilarious. It was like you were in a Rick and Morty episode. You know what I mean? And, and I kind of got a feel for, oh, this is kind of what they're going to do. You know what I mean? Like, it, it really gave me a feel of how the Rick and Morty episodes were going to be for season three and, and, and throughout because what Rick and Morty wants to do is it, is it to be a uh, iterative, non-iterative episodes like Family Guy. So you don't have to rely on the story to uh, continue in one direction or the next. You can, each episode is a standalone episode. Um, and so, like, right here, this game would be a standalone episode. They'd, be, they'd go around, they'd have this Morty clone fucking messing up at the home. They'd go back to Rick doing crazy stuff. They'd go back to the Morty, you know, you go back to the Morty clone, and it's just like, you, you know, there's there's so many, uh, I can tell, I, I totally get where they're going with this game. Or, with, sorry, with, with the series, and this game was fantastic, man. Oh, I just loved it so much. There's so many hidden gems, so many secrets that were that were kind of just buried around in it too. Uh, I mean, I was constantly killing myself because I wanted to find out what happens. Um, yeah, here I'll show you right now me switching between camera views uh, for the camera. Uh, but I just I, this makes me want a Futurama, a Futurama like this in VR. If Alchemy got the Futurama license some with some magical way, and and start did this with VR, they could sell it for sixty. They could sell it for sixty bucks. <laughs> you understand me? They could sell that. The IP alone would carry that through sixty. And so these are the different cameras here. Yeah, fire. I love. There was a there's a scene where if you you see the different camera angles and then eventually we, we make we find that camera and then we can grab this one and, and move it around and it's so fun we could do so many little cinematic experiences like i was carrying chat like i was holding chat in the palm of my hand and moving them around to the best angles possible uh and you see even like setting up the scene right here uh it's so great i had an absolute blast with this game i got five hours out of it and that's one thing that i also kind of want to bring up because People were talking about this game. They said one hours, two hours refund. They're getting their Steam refund out of this. This is a thirty dollars game, and they're Steam refunding it because they didn't play it long enough. They didn't play it. They didn't. You know, they played it for an hour and a half and finished. And there's different ways you can play this game. You feel me? I don't. I'm messing around. You know, following the story when I want, but then waiting for all possible dialogue options, trying to coax things out of these guys that you know requires you a finesse something secret, looking for Easter eggs. I'm, 
I'm digging for it all. So I got through half the first half of the game in two hours, and then played for another three. I probably spent an hour and a half finishing the campaign, and then an hour and a half looking for tapes, listening to them, drinking beers, messing around, and you know, it's just, man. I was really impressed, and I can't wait for more uh, out of Alakami because it was excellent. Here you can see I forgot about the camera. This will happen from time to time where I forget that I'm directing a, a, a production and that I have to <laughs> move the move the camera around in order to see what I'm seeing. <laughs> that was the only downside of this, and I didn't happen too often um, where I would forget to do it. But you can see, I think I was looking. I think I'm looking for chat right now. <laughs> oh man so anyway i had an absolute blast with this one and it brought so much attention to vr like like you know this is what i've been saying vr is gonna blow up when more when there's more popular games please hit the follow button get wrecked thank you so much that's our new follower uh, notification by the way uh if you are familiar with twitch we have you, that's what you get when you hit that follow button. So come on by if you're watching from the tubes. And you get a little celebration. Get wrecked. Thank you so much, man. Um, and so that was Rick and Morty. I had a freaking blast. And, it, and so like I was saying, it was bringing attention to VR. It has, it's brought in more high-level, high-profile eyes. King Goth, Soda Poppin, big names were playing this. And they were having a great time. Not to mention, they were doing an excellent job of streaming it. Uh, some big streamers streaming this game with the with the chat on their hand, chat in VR, and they're doing it perfect. I'm so happy to see VR streaming going this direction because it was, uh, for sure, you know, for a while I feel like the VR the VR streams were were not really well accepted. Um, now I definitely feel like they are getting way better. The bigger streamers are starting to kind of figure out how to how to do how to do these VR streams effectively. And, uh, you know, there's some big streamers doing, doing Rick and Morty, and people were loving it. So I'm stoked. I think it's all it takes is a good game to bring more eyes into the VR streaming business. I think YouTube is, VR YouTube is killing it right now. I think they're doing very well. Uh, guys like Tribal and Nathy and Man vs. VR and uh, <clears throat> who else? There's a bunch. There's so many people. Um, UK Rifter and uh, the one I'm f for... Getting the one that Nathy always does stuff with. Uh, <laughs> but there's... There's Josh Dub. There's all these excellent YouTubers that are getting... That are really... And they're starting to blow up. And so I, I, it's a matter of time on Twitch. But... I had a ton of fun with Rick and Morty. Uh, what's up next? Orbis. That was a big game we hyped up on this stream for a while. We were very excited. Um, very excited to be getting into... Uh, the whole MMO game, you know, uh, Orbis is the first VR MMO. It's in, this is the closed alpha. So you had to buy into this by supporting their Kickstarter. And, um, it was really good. I, I had a lot of fun with it. They redid the warrior class, which is their tank class. Um, and we ran that and leveled that and did that in the dungeons. And it's fun. I can see the direction that this game is going, um, in terms of how you how it's supposed to be played, how you're supposed to tank, how you're supposed to kind of interact with other people in it, how your group members are supposed to work, how threats supposed to work, it's there. The mechanics are there and are in VR, and so it, I had an absolute blast. Um, we were we were what did we do? We partied up with youth and Psy makes a lot and uh, just power leveled as a group. Um, this is me tanking. We have our three other group members here. Uh, party systems in place, threats in place, there's open voice comms so you can talk to anybody uh, that you see around you, but then additionally, uh, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little uh, compass on your left shoulder uh, that you can grab and then talk into to talk to your party. So if when you die and you're far away from your party, you can communicate with them. And so this is the warrior class and you can see here uh, the blocking mechanics of me tanking. And the way that the, that the tanking kind of works in this game is it's very room scale based, which I found a ton, to be a ton of fun and really and, and kind of a nice way of doing it. But basically what you do is, let's say uh, someone pulls threat, um, the best option is for me to physically like stand between the person and the mob. 
uh, that is attacking them. By doing that, I can get between them and block the attacks that are directed at them and, and have them direct, directed at me. By blocking, I additionally gain threat. So it's also a threat me threat regaining mechanic. So if someone is doing a lot of damage and they pull threat from you, you get in front, you stand in front of that person. They can't move and they have to shoot around you. So it's kind of like a, it almost, it, it, once you tell you, once you know, I, I ingrained in my group, don't move if you pull threat. You're just going to fuck yourself. Because I can't follow you and block spells from you if you pull threat. This is one of the bigger mods. And you can see actually what we do here is we have, we kite him first. Our mages cast a slow spell. They do damage. I throw my taunt, and I block the first ability, and now I have threat. He gains it, and you see, again, I go in front of him, and now I am soaking the damage with my shield uh, while my teammate holds threat. Eventually, I would regain, and then I could reposition my character uh, so that they could shoot, not a shoot around me, because because they can't shoot through my, uh, they can't shoot through the shield. Uh, and so there's, it was, it's, it's interesting. It was really well thought out mechanics. There's a lot of variety in the in the enemies, um, tons of different uh, uh, zones. Right here is the dragons, which were new new to the closed alpha, uh, with a fire zone. Um, they they added a shield stun to your character, so you'll see me when I go to pull a mob. I'll typically throw an attack, a taunt like this. He'll attack me. I block it, and then I try and hit him with my shield. You'll see me kind of thrusting with the shield from time to time to throw out a shield stun, which stuns their, which obviously stops them from moving and attacking. Um, and so I kind of got into the groove of being able to pull and throw and taunt and stun the mobs before they could even get to my uh, DPS. And we were just rolling. And you can, I mean, it is a, it is, it, I see the potential in this game a, a lot. Uh, I didn't, get, I didn't check out the housing system which was in place. And uh, yeah, we went into the dungeon. We we crawled through the dungeon. We tried to do the boss multiple times, but we were short a man. So. That was incredibly challenging. Uh, trying to fight this big crab boss. Uh, you can see here, we actually tried a bunch of different strategies. Stacking uh, was one of them, where we had all, all this all stacked behind the tank, and then I would try and block and soak all damage, and they'd shoot over me. Uh, eventually, this big mob gets out of my control, or I think I started losing front, uh, front sword tracking. Um, and then it's it. I, I see a lot of potential for it, and I absolutely loved the closed alpha. I'm really looking forward to uh, to more of this because this was excellent. I didn't try out any of the other classes when we did this. When we, by the way, I just purely leveled the warrior. It actually took a long time to level up. Um, it was like a good amount of time. I was leveling with a group. I don't know if that's slowed me down in terms of leveling speed, but it took a while to level up. Um, like I had, I felt like I was grinding for sure. I hope I, I believe where you're you're gonna keep levels and keep all all your gear and characters and stuff between alphas. I think that's how it's gonna work. Uh, and so I'm excited because this is we've done all this already. So what I want to see next is what's the next level of content gonna be. You know what I mean? What's the level 12, 15 content gonna be like? Um, but yeah, I had a ton of fun. I I'm really happy with uh, we, uh with picking up this one and how it's been how it's been working. It's Coming along nice. I think it's going to... Unless another MMO comes out that has better quality graphics, uh, I think this game has a good chance of, of having, a, having a good run. I think it'll be successful. Um, what is up next? So we did Orbis, Rick and Morty, The Wave VR. This is an interesting one. Um, what The Wave VR is, is it's basically raving for VR. Um, I honestly think it's kind of the future of how raves should be done. <laughs> Just because they're, it's, it was so cool, and it's like I totally see how this can appeal to the raver, you know, the dude that drops Molly, it takes, takes drops Molly, it takes Molly, that does, you know, does all those, and then goes out and goes to raves and is doing glow stick dancing and stuff. Um, I absolutely get that vibe. It, it can, I don't know if it's meant... For I don't know, if this is where like what raves should be, where raves should be done. But it's definitely it captures the feeling of a vibe, per, or the feeling of a rave perfectly. It catches the vibe of a rave perfectly in VR. Um, and so you can see here, there's. Let's see if we can find me me at the shop. Um, so it, basically, the way this game works is you enter into the uh, main area. You go into this social zone. You, you customize your character. 
Uh, and so you, you have a few customized options. We kind of tried out a few different ones, saw it, see which one we liked. Um, then to our left here is our own private room. Now, any friend that we invite can join that private room and listen to any music that we make. There's a, there's a bunch of uh, uh, pre-installed songs, like, like 30 or something like that, 30 plus, that you can use to, to use on the DJ booth, which we'll talk about later. Because I didn't get to it until a little bit. So I got online because uh, they were advertising in the Wave VR a, uh, a concert. That this dude was gonna, this dude was gonna be hosting this event, and he was gonna be playing music, and anybody could join, and and uh, and so I was like, yeah, let's go check it out. And so you see me here, kind of just jamming around. Uh, we went full panda. Uh, down there is the DJ booth. We didn't immediately go down there, um, but you go to the social lobby, and that's kind of how this all starts. So you enter the social lobby, and there's an experience system and a cash system in this game. Uh, basically, the more shows you go to, the more experience you get, the more cash you get. Uh, the more things you do in that show, the more stuff you explore, the more experience you get, the more cash you get. What experience does exactly, I don't really know. Uh, I didn't, I guess, invest that much time into seeing what it was. Um, but you'll see here, just in this little uh, scene right here, uh, this is the shop. And so I eventually get over there and we'll, I'll, I'll cut to it. But the shop has all of these different items that you can buy. Uh, when I initially jumped in, there was a bunch of items that were given to me, uh, kind of like as a starter pack, so to speak, uh, in my inventory. But basically, you use the cash you earn for exploring and walking around these concerts uh, to buy items, which you can then use to further enhance your rave experience. Uh, so, essentially what... What I did was I hopped in and, you know, we, we go to Zach Shepard. That's who it was. I think that's the guy who created who, uh, one of the devs of the of the game, I believe. Um, and you're kind of op entered into this cave. And I walk up and there's 50 people per room. You can see you get achievements on attending a show. That gives me experience and cash. Uh, and you walk into this room, there's 50 people per room, it's all instanced, right? So I guess there is over 300 people online watching this dude's concert, but, uh, you know, 50 person, fifty people per instance. Um, uh, Ken Bai was in here, by the way, we'll be talking a little bit more about him and the interesting topic of conversation he brought up. But, <clears throat> so you're in here, we're, we're, you're, we're hanging out, um, and these are the items that you can use that are in your inventory. You can see there on the left is experience. And uh, my level and the cash. And these items are required to be used with a friend or with another person. So basically what you do is you go into the inventory, you select the item you want, and then you ha put your hand out to another person and say, take this, take this now, experience this with me. Um, there's open comms so they can hear you. And uh, you share what I would call a basically an acid trip <laughs> of different variety um you can see me here wave and i think that's ken i said hi i love this show uh and then so this guy and then so then this guy got onto the uh dj booth which you can see which is kind of up uh, up above us and started playing music and everybody is dancing the dj can do effects so he can kind of change like right now he's pixelating the whole headset he can you can he can do these effects to the to the whole room he can make himself giant and lurking above you or do or do some you know crazy effects like that uh change what kind of what the world around around you looks like what's going on with and you can court you can coordinate all these and pre and pre-render all these and save them all in that in your own dj zone so he had he had all these i'm sure already built out and saved and ready to go um and you know was, i mean concert in vr the music was pretty good i had a good time yeah you <laughs> aggro probably dude but I muted myself because I didn't want to be, you know, heard when I'm sitting in there. But it's pretty interesting. The DJ has full control over the booth, and he's talking to people. He can talk to the whole crowd. Everybody hears the DJ, and here you can see him. He's made himself giant over the whole crowd. 
<laughs> it was really interesting, man. I really had a good time in there. I'm trying to get to one of the... Oh, here we go. So eventually I figured out how to use the items. You have to share them with a friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's like yeah, an acid trip. Think, dude, do you think you need drugs for this? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an acid trip, man. Like we share this. I'm with. I'm in here with one other guy who I who I. And it's just it's just okay. weird, crazy oh, stuff like this. I'm not gonna be the one to tell you. All right, I'll let you make your own decisions. And so then once you're out of these trips, you pop out, but when you're in them, you have this little oh, bubble around God. your head. And you can see that, that guy right there has a little bubble. He's GBH in one of these trips. Man. Thank you so much. Um, We're tripping. It was, it, it was interesting, man. I had a good I had a good time with it. We stayed there. We stayed there for like an hour and a half, just kind of experiencing everything, walking around the whole concert area. There's different rooms that have different effects. Uh, there's like an all-mirror room, a, an underground room. It was really... Uh, like, look at these trips. These trips were pretty intense, though. Like, legitimately, you needed to have a epilepsy warning at the start of this game before getting into it, because it was just insane. Uh, it's like the I was I I don't get sick when we play when I play VR with pretty much any game, and I was feeling a little ill <laughs> playing playing this game with after experiencing a bunch of those different trips because they are just it's just warping your whole fucking lifestyle because you're in vr it's not just on your 2d screen it's you're you know everywhere every, it's all it's all getting crazy it's like i don't know i've never taken acid but i assume that's what acid is like you know what i'm saying it's just insane um But I had a good time with it, and I'm looking forward to the next concert. We'll definitely be attending it on, on, on stream again, for sure. Um, so that is Wave VR. A lot of fun. Um, then we dove into Bullets and More. Uh, this game's got a little controversy around it. It's kind of in the VR community, at least. I know anyone that's tuning in from the non... If you are from the non-VR community, I like, what the fuck? Bullets and More, what is that? Um... Doesn't have a good rep on the old Vive subreddit. Uh, a lot of people accuse BAM uh, players of being shills, of being toxic, of you know promoting the game too much. Yeah, and you know, and so I don't want to play because I've seen all this shit like shilling. I can't believe it's actually a good game anymore. Uh, and there's a lot of controversy, and so I decided, fuck it, let's. I'm gonna get the game. I'm gonna pay the 15. It's not a lot of money. 15 bucks for another shooter that apparently is fant is so is just way better than Pavlov, uh, on par with Onward, and I had a ton of fun in this game, and it's honestly like my, it's, it's right in line with Pavlov for me in terms of enjoyment, um, it runs a lot, there's team deathmatch and zombie mode, you just add a gun game, um, it operates a lot like Pavlov in terms of triggers to grab things, and, uh, fast-paced kind of fast-paced shooting when you drop your gun you don't sprint and uh i think there's pretty much just one one movement speed i think crouching slows you down um the the time to kill feels a lot like pavlov uh the precision required is very different than uh, than the other than onward or pavlov in that uh you'll see a, there's a little dot that you have on the top of the controller uh this little dot is what you have to use to grab everything in the game. Um, if you want to grab, if you want to grab the chamber and cock your gun, you have to get it on the dot in the center of the controller. Uh, it's it's right about here on the controller is where it feel is where it, where it feels like right about here. It's this little circle in the game, not obviously in real life. Uh, and you have to get that dot on what you want to grab and then grab it. Uh, I'm so used to onward that I, I prefer to be using the grip to grab stuff instead of trigger. Uh, and so that was kind of my one gripe when I initially started playing with, and, and, and learning was that I had to, this, you know, this trigger to grip functionality wasn't flying for me. Um, but this game is a lot of fun. There is a ton of maps. There's a bunch of different game modes. Uh, they all work on all the, on all the maps and there's different maps for those game there's some like unique maps for those game modes like we played zombie mode on a, on a dark version of the map there's custom built maps so people can build maps and then you can host a lobby and people can join you on uh, in them and uh 
there's all sorts of ports already. There, I, I played Office uh, from CS:GO. I played uh, Blood Gulch from Halo. Um, it's really good. The loadout system is pretty unique in that there's just everything on a table, and you can click on what you want onto your gun. You can see here there's actually a, a Pictine rail system, and there's not really any limit to what you're putting on uh, what you put onto your weapon. Uh, so I actually have a 4x canted on the side there on that Pictine rail, and then a red dot on the top. Uh, and then I could put something else on the other side and something behind the red dot if I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So there's actually a lot of freedom in terms of your loadout. There, it, it's it's not strictly uh, it's not as strict as Onward, and uh, I, I I enjoy it. The it's definitely something that basically what we did uh, when we when we played this was we went to Pavlov, played Pavlov, uh, had a good time with it, but. When we went to no, we went to go we went to go join a lobby in Pavlov and it was full and there wasn't any other open lobbies so we tried to create one and nobody joined and so then I was like well shoot I don't have any lobbies here let's go to Bam went to Bam and there's a lobby and so that's kind of how I'm gonna treat these both these games in my is, is rotate between them I kind of have an itch for Bam so I do kind of want to play Bam again before we jump back into Pavlov um, but and then onwards kind of just another another beast it's a totally different style of shooter. Um, but it was good. I had a good time with it. I, I think it's worth the 15. Uh, if you like shooters, uh, add it to the list and, and play it when there's I mean play it when there's a lobby because it's fun. You know what I mean? It's I think there's I think it's 6v6 is the is the max lobby, so it's bigger than uh, most lobbies that are out. I think I think Pavlov's 6v6 too. Maybe it's 5v5. Uh, a lot of gun variety too. I really liked that. Plenty of different guns. Uh, you can do kind of whatever you want with your loadout systems. You can save them. Um, it's good. Ton of fun. I had a good time with Bam. I like Search and Destroy on Pavlov. I think that kind of what separates it from Bam uh, in that it's a little, a little bit more tactical. Uh, yeah, I do enjoy S and D. Um, but yeah, they're they they're they're both easily rotatable into the into the you know into our play into a into the playlist so to speak and quality games. Uh, and this dude is constantly updating it. Like the like the like every fucking week, there's something new this dude's making. Uh, he added, like I said, he just added gun game, and there's always new maps getting ported in and and created. And yeah, I had a blast with this one. You can climb ladders too. <laughs> so that was kind of neat. Um, that's Bam. What's that? what else do we hop into? Oh yeah, this one, Bullet Sorrow. So every once in a while we run into a game that we just kind of pick up and try out and, it's, you know, I hope it's good. I think it's all right, you know. Uh, we tried out Bullet Sorrow this week, uh, which had a new update, a big update, um, and it, they added multiplayer, and so I was stoked to try that out. I wanted to get in and, and give it a test run. Um... I really liked the game. It was a ton of fun. Um, the 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 content, the 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 shooting, the move, the teleport movement, how it loads each zone, um, the what the enemy variety. It was good. Uh, the bullet time system that's in here. Uh, the physics of all the guns felt good. Uh, the ammo system for guns, how it reloads. I I liked it all. I really did. I thought it was. I thought it was a cool time crisis style game, and uh, the only problem is it was twenty five bucks, and it's an hour long. <laughs> the campaign. I know it's an early access, right? Oh, actually, no, it's not. It came out of early access, so I don't know if that's even really something you can say anymore. But the campaign's an hour long. It's a ton of fun, um, but for twenty five bucks, that's just not enough of a campaign. Uh, I was hoping multiplayer would, you know, add what. A, a, a decent amount of hours to it, but when we tried to play multiplayer, the servers weren't online or they weren't connecting. I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to to join a, a multiplayer lobby. I think since then they've they've at least considered adding in trackpad locomotion, which would totally change my my my. I might try and go back and play this again on multiplayer, um, but I really wanted to see what it was like because apparently it was it's still kind of teleport based, but there's this bullet time mechanic you can use for uh, as a cooldown and it creates a little field around you that slows slows bullets like right now this is bullet time right so everything's a little slower uh these guys are moving slower my bullets are my bullets move move normal speed theirs move slow you can see them traveling in the sky there 
there that's in multiplayer as a cooldown and an orb around you and so i'm really curious how that all works i want to see it as a mechanic and uh but when we tried to, to load up in the multiplayer it didn't work uh boss fights were really cool this is one of them there's the two ninja fight it takes a pretty decent amount of time you're dodging i felt like i was invincible maybe on a maybe if i had tried a harder difficulty I'd, i might uh, enjoy it even more i actually feel like it's a bit of a challenge but um Yeah, man, I had a, I, I liked it. I had a good time with it. Carrie, if you ever want to see what we're playing, buddy, check the uh, event calendar on Twitch, and that's something that goes for anybody that's watching on YouTube or or Twitch. Uh, go check out our calendar. Um, we put up all of the games we're going to be playing, anything that's coming up. Um, it's all planned out, all there. So, um, I encourage you to look at it because I put a lot, I put a decent amount of time into thinking up our schedule, uh, what games we're gonna play. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a tough challenge to fill four hours for five days a week on Twitch, you know what I mean? Uh, with pure VR, so I'm always on the lookout, uh, for new games and new stuff, and, uh, we're always putting, uh, games we're excited about up on that list when we, when we get release dates. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about some upcoming games, uh, with some new release dates that I got wrong. Uh, and I think I might be still wrong on that calendar. <clears throat> um, and so I'm pretty stoked about it. Next. Ah, yes. So that's it for what we played this week. Um, we played a pretty good amount of games and a lot of really good ones. Uh, I mean, VR killed it this week. It was a ton of fun, as expected. It's only going to get better. VR next week is so good. It's like horror week next week, and I'm just stoked. I'm like, I'm just hyped to uh, play all the games that are coming. We'll talk more about that. What I want to get into next is uh, uh, a bit of the show I want to do where we kind of talk about VR news, not necessarily games played uh, or anything like that. Um, but more just stuff that's happening in the industry, what people are talking about. Um, uh, maybe a new t piece of technology has been released that, you know, uh, someone's doing something different, you know. So that's where we're going here. And we're going to, I'm just trying to ramble on while I type news. Uh, and the first bit we're going to start out with is Facebook Spaces. Now, I guess you could consider this a game, but frankly, I want to take the spaces into a whole another conversation. And so um, let's go over to the video, uh, the announcement video of spaces and, and them showing what they want spaces to be and what they want spaces to do. Um, and this still here you go. Hey, sis. Hey, Jack. Are you all excited for our trip? Yeah, and look what I found. <gasps> this is so cool. Is this the same spot we're going to? I hope so. And look, I think that's where we're taking the boat tour. Oh, I love it. Look, I'm going to go chat with Melissa, but you're setting up the party room, right? Yeah, I got it. Great. See you later, Jack. All right. See you later. Bye. Hey, girl. Guess what? What? I got the apartment. Wow, nice. Look at your balcony. I know, it's amazing. No roommates. <laughs> I have it all planned out. The lucky blue couch. Yes. yes. This table with this floor. <gasps> Perfect. <laughs> Jack keeps calling me. Can we talk later? Sure. Bye. Surprise! Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bye. Okay, hold this balloon. You know we gotta do it. Birthday selfie! Oh my god. <laughs> Don't forget your birthday hat. <laughs> That's a good one. Hey! Wow. Oh, that's my birthday hat! So uh -huh. cute! <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you saw me watching my face during this whole thing, but I'm just so blatantly uninterested. And the whole Facebook fa Facebook Spaces thing. I know a lot of people are hyped about it. it uh, you know, the people that are interested in social VR, uh, you know, totally stoked on on Facebook uh, getting into the VR. You know, I, I mean, they are in, right? But actually an app, right? Because they've had Oculus, had Oculus Home. Uh, never really anything directly by Facebook. By the way, uh, Ninja Flip, thank you so much for hitting that follow button during that video. I really do appreciate you, man. Thank you for being a friend. Um... 
welcome to the agency. Uh, so, Facebook Spaces, it's meant for you to be able to uh, link your Facebook account uh, with your Oculus headset, go into Spaces, and call your friends through Facebook, and then interact with them. Um, the video, in my opinion, their, their advertisement video is like a... Uh, it's what they... It's the future, maybe, of what the app could be. Um, my main problem with it is that I don't... I like in real life with Facebook, I don't think I have anybody that owns VR. I don't know anybody in real life that owns VR. I know plenty of, I have a shit ton of Oculus friends. I have a ton of Steam friends. I know plenty of people that play VR, but I know no one in real life. And so to be able to link this with your Facebook account, it's like, it's, ah, I don't, I'm, it's, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just, there's just no interest from me. I have, it's, uh, I, I'm, I know I was just in the wave VR, which is basically like a social space, right? But at least there they have some game mechanics with these experience and, and, and interesting acid trips you can go on and this whole DJ mechanic, you know, uh, this is literally meant for sharing videos and 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 pictures with your facebook friends now if you're if that's what you're looking for out of out of vr then like this is it you know this is what you want it has some cool stuff where it can take a, one of your facebook pictures and then give you uh, uh an avatar that's like your picture like you based off your picture done by some you know ai scanning of your face and, and then it puts it you know through their hour like what you know what facial features should we put to make him look like him and so you see all these pictures of people you know, taking VR selfies to me seems like the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. I don't like taking self. I think selfies are dumb already, right? So I'm not in the whole fucking Facebook culture thing. So this is why this all seems stupid to me. I don't do Facebook. I don't take pictures all the time. I'm like, it's not just not. It's not part of my lifestyle. Um, but it's like, really, we're gonna be taking pictures of avatars and then posting those on Facebook. Like, where does it all end? You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, so I was unimpressed, right? Um, but some interesting stuff came out. Interesting pieces of conversation came out. Um, one from a guy named Kent By. Uh, he does a podcast called Voices of VR. And that's a much more in-depth sort of uh, podcast, VR podcast where he's talking to people in the industry more uh, about uh, stuff like, you know, more technology um, and theoretical game stuff like VR game design stuff like that. So it's an incredibly interesting podcast, but not so much on focused on just games and VR. Um, and I guess neither are we. But I like this isn't going to be the longer section of the stream, you know. Um, and so Kent raises this incredibly interesting question that I see on Twitter, and it says, "Reminder: Oculus privacy policy is open-ended enough." to allow Facebook to record everything you see or do in spaces. More in this thread. And then from a quote from the uh, Facebook's privacy policy, when you post, share, or communicate with other Oculus users on our services, we receive and store those communications. Now, some interesting tweets followed up saying that Voices of conversations are not recorded or stored. Coming from um, Mike Beltzner, who uh, works in Facebook, uh, working Facebook, right? Um, but that's not specifically saying that Facebook will not record any of these Oculus conversations. You know what I'm saying? So they still, it's open ended to where. They may, dis they may, they they won't, but they can if they want to. They can record anything you say or talk about in spaces. Um, and I think that's insane. I think that's something that people don't really think about. Not nothing that that's something that didn't really come to my mind immediately when I thought of Facebook Spaces. My my mind doesn't go to privacy. It goes to oh, this is a stupid game, but it's not a game, right? It's a social app. Um, and so, like, I don't think of this sort of stuff. And so it's really interesting to hear 
these other other intellectual thoughts coming from these people. Another interesting co topic that was brought up pretty recently uh, was harassment in VR. Um, apparently, you know, especially as a female, it's pretty bad when you get harassed because you, through, mo through most internet uh, or online encounters when you play v video games, there's not enough freedom to be really physically harassing anyone. Um, you know, you can teabag guys or, uh, you know, teabag players or, uh, you know, do, you know, a dance around somebody or, or, you know, verbally harass them in games. But VR kind of opens up this whole new sort of category for what people can do to other people. It's why it's so popular. That's why it's such a big social boom sort of thing. So it really can bring people from so far away together, so, you know, socially. That's why this whole Facebook Spaces thing has a lot of traction. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of ways that you can <laughs> harass, especially, you know, you can harass people in this game. Um, <coughs> you know, going as far as being able to sort of to grope and 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 search out these female players and sort of and so there's a lot of talk in the industry a lot of devs discussing you know what can we do uh, a lot of stuff where it's kind of like personal bubble sort of stuff where if they go into it uh they get blocked from you seeing them they still have they're still seeing what they want to see and are still doing what they want to do but that would be uh muted or blinded to you um amongst other sort of options i guess you could say uh, and so, you know, it's something that's not, uh, necessarily set in stone, but it is, uh, an interesting topic to raise and something that you definitely need to sort of, I don't know, what do you do? Onward is probably the most susceptible to that, right? There's no, there's no, there's not going to be ever any muting between contact, you know what I'm saying? So it's curious how you really prevent that. I think it's got to be a community thing, uh, and you got to have the proper functionality to report and ban people. Uh, I think those are the two obvious, but, you know, people find ways to work around that sort of shit, so what are you going to do? Now we're going to move on to the last bit of this podcast, where we are going to discuss new and upcoming games, release dates that I have. Um, um, and we're going to start off with a new Farpoint story trailer, Holy Mother of Sweet Baby Jesus. Farpoint looks absolutely incredible, way better than I thought it was gonna than I thought it was gonna be looking. Uh, I am way more excited than I was about this game. Uh, it's it looks good, okay? It looks good. Let's let's pop over and let's watch the trailer, uh, the new story trailer uh, for Farpoint. Hello, planet Earth. I'm Eva Tyson, and joining me is one of my colleagues, Dr. Grant Moon. Hi. Our ship is here to analyze a very special wave of radiation. But what makes this radiation so special is that it has no discernible source. Wait. Oh my god. I wanna give it. Location unknown. This planet is almost 800,000 light years from Earth. We're in the middle of the most fascinating scientific opportunity in history. Are you seeing this? It's alien. How long do you think it's been here? A lot longer than us. Which could mean one of two things. Either whatever was on it is dead by now, or... What? They've had time to breed. Going to get us the hell out of here. Oh my 
<laughs> ah, that looks so good. I've been waiting for you a long time. <sighs> looks so good. It's a mad, mad world we live in. It looks so good, man. Okay, so this is Farpoint. Uh, it comes out for the PSVR exclusively uh, on, I think, May 17th or 16th, even maybe. But it says 17th here on the screen. Um, it requires the aim controller which you can see here and uh according to some reports it's got it's got tons of buttons tons of functionality and uh it it's a really nice controller um i'm a little can i'm a little interested in terms of how they did this trailer with what is vr and what isn't this does not i don't think this is gonna be in vr i think this is a cinematic bit that they've added or done in order um maybe it's not get re, i realize it says reformatted for non-vr displays right there but you know what does that entirely mean does this mean that if i if i show you guys if we stream it what look better for you guys is it going to look like this for you guys and maybe not so sharp for me because then you get to sort of you get to uh a scene where's this chick running in front of him uh where it just doesn't look nearly as high graphical quality right here like you see her her running it's just i realize that the face is what we saw but even this it just doesn't look to me to be nearly as sharp as as this first face you know what i'm saying um so i'm curious what they've done and what's vr and what isn't on this trailer i'm curious If this is how good faces are in VR, I'm going to be stoked because this looks really sharp. <laughs> um, what do we got here? And then so then you have faces here. You see there, it, it looks good, right? But not nearly as, there's not, doesn't seem to be nearly as much detail in this, in this face in comparison. So I'm, I don't know what's happening with this trailer. Um... But, hell yeah, dude. I am stoked on this. We have the aim controller pre-ordered. It's all coming on launch day. We are absolutely 100%, 1 million percent streaming this. Um, it's going to be real It's going to be real fun, man. It's going to be real fun. It has co-op, too. There's a co-op gameplay mode where, you're, where it's like some sort of wave... I don't know. Some sort of wave, wave shooter, right? Probably it is, but there's scoring and leaderboards, and so... Oh, it's going to be good. I am so thrilled for this, dude. I absolutely love uh, PSVR. I think the games for it are all really quite quite a lot of fun. And uh, to have Farpoint come out come out in less than a month, less, ha like half a month, uh, I am stoked. I'm so it's thrilled. Mad, mad Looks amazing. Now... A sleeper, two sleepers. I got two sleepers actually. One is out now. One is coming out soon. Um, the next game we're going to talk about is Carnage Chronicles. Um, this game looks pretty dang legit, quite frankly. Uh, it seems to be to be another uh, what was it, Adventureland or what is that what it's called? No. What was it called? That first, that first RPG, like the first one that came out, Vanishing, Vanishing Realms, Vanishing Realms. This looks to kind of be like another uh, sort of higher definition take on it, with probably a better combat system. But it looks pretty good. Like there's a decent amount of. Like, there's co-op. Obviously, that's... You know... I'm stoked on this one. We've been excited about Carnage Chronicles for a while. I've been keeping an eye on it. Seems like there's a decent amount of enemy variety here that I wasn't quite quite ready for or expecting. Um, 
and you know different zones good amount of like it just it looks pretty sick it looks like a good time so i'm pretty stoked on it um <laughs> nordic trolls i love it uh and so this comes out in 23 hours refresh that because it's sooner now 21 hours uh this little bad boy is just gonna drop tomorrow so we're gonna be playing this tomorrow um when it goes live <laughs> Carter's chronicles yeah, uh, it looks like a ton of fun, and I was expecting it the 26th. Uh, we had it on the event calendar for then. Uh, we're just going to bump that bad boy up. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty solid. Looks pretty solid. I'm not, I'm not sure on the price. There's no, uh, no price point there. Um... What else? Oh, there's one more. I want to take a look at the... Uh, let me go here. We're going to go and take a take a little gander at the... Uh, I know we talked about this last stream. I guess we won't we won't look at video at it. We'll just we'll move on to the next, uh, the next video. But... Um, Rec Room Quest update is coming out. Or is out, rather. Uh, and it's had some excellent reception. Um, it's a new laser tag-esque shooting sort of quest mode. Uh, we haven't dove into it yet on stream, but it's got a lot of people are really are really enjoying it. Uh, and I kind of want to get into Rec Room and really sink my teeth into trying to get all these items and kind of loading out our character, so to speak, in Rec Room. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited to be diving into that. I think we have it on the calendar for tomorrow, but like I said, uh, I think we're going to have um, Carnage Chronicles tomorrow. Uh, and so we'll have to we'll be pushing Rec Room probably back a couple days since we're gonna have Wilson's Heart on Tuesday, uh, the twenty sixth. That game looks uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, Carnage Chronicles tomorrow, the twenty fourth. Uh, is tomorrow Monday? Is tomorrow the twenty fourth. That doesn't come out till Wednesday. Okay. So then we'll so then we'll play Rec Room probably on Tuesday. If Carnage Chronicles doesn't last this long enough. What else? What else? Ah yes. Another hidden gem, everyone. I recommend you go and take a look. Um but I haven't don't I need to make sure that I can get this running through Revive. But um for the next if you're tuning into the stream, lucky you. Uh, for the next, what is it? 14 hours. I just saw this on Soda Pop and Stream. Monstrum is discounted to five dollars. This is a twenty dollar. This is a twenty dollar game. Uh, initially made for 2D. Has Oculus Rift support. So what we're gonna try and do is revive this one and play it on the Vive. Obviously seated uh, with a controller, not touched. There's no motion control support. Um, but if you go to Chrono.gg and I'll link it in chat, uh, you can pick this up for five bucks. Um, it seems pretty interesting, a procedurally generated environment that you're supposed to escape from. Uh, there's a there's a one of three monster types tracking you down, and uh, you have to find stuff to escape, find materials to escape without getting caught by the monster. And it's a horror game, uh, and so it's like right down our alley. I don't know how I missed this one. I just must have uh, either come out with VR a while ago and we just never picked it up because we had our vibe and we weren't looking for Oculus games or what, but. It's only five bucks, so we we went and picked. Yeah, they give you Steam keys. Like they gave us a Steam key. The thing is, is it's Oculus only. It only has Oculus support, right? So I have to make sure that it, we can revive it successfully uh, and play it. But I, th I hopefully, I hope it'll work because the game actually seems like it'd be pretty fun. Uh, like kind of like a Resident Evil Seven sort of game gameplay mechanics uh, style, where you're hiding and running, uh, not necessarily fighting. So pretty terrifying. <laughs> The real, the real terrifying kind of horror. You know what I'm talking about? Um, so yeah, that is that. What else do we have? Later down the pipe, we got uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew, which we did touch on um, during last week's stream, but we are going to be doing a four-man multi-stream on the 30th. I'll keep mentioning that every, every cast until it happens. Uh, it's going to be incredible. We have four streamers that are excellent at streaming. Rui Rees, these, uh, sorry, Rui Rees, 
uh, Cymex a lot. I think Upload VR might be getting in on it. And uh, Rewinder, I think, are all going to be uh, joining up, and we're going to be playing Star Trek Bridge Crew together, and we'll have a multi-stream going where you can watch from all four perspectives at the same time. Um, and so it's going to be, I think it's going to be a ton of fun. We'll, you know, we'll all be communicating with each other and chatting it up, and uh, I am really stoked for Bridge Crew. Just like Rick and Morty, I think Bridge Crew, uh, I think Bridge Crew is going to bring in a lot of eyes to VR, and uh, it's really going to, I think, I, like I'm, we're going to have full, we're going to have a full UI, we're going to change all of our uh, layover stuff. This will all be new. We'll have new bridge crew stuff. We'll have new bridge crew uh, notifications. Everything. We're going ham on it. New sound effects. The whole nine yards, man. It's gonna be a big event, and we're gonna be streaming that at 10 p.m. PST on the on release day. So, or 10 a.m. rather on release day. Um, I'm taking the, we're taking work off, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So look forward to that coming up on the 30th, and then obviously Farpoint the 17th. Before that, we'll be playing that as well. And uh, I think that will be it for us tonight. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, tune in on the live stream this next com uh, coming week, guys. I do encourage you, if you're tuning in from YouTube, to please stop by at twitch.tv slash nightfire. Uh, I stream every Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. PST. Um, this week we have Wilson's Heart. I think I'm going to hop into Monstrum tonight, uh, which will be pretty fun. Arizona Sunshine, Robo Recall, uh uh carnage chronicles uh, i mean there's a lot of stuff coming out this week and then more games next week and we're just going to be filling time with all of them and then <coughs> down comes farpoint probably an onward update and uh things are just going to be rolling it's going to be a ton of fun thank you so much if you uh for tuning in and hanging out that is it for episode two of the podcast if you are on from the twitch stream please hang around we're just going to take a quick little break here play some jams good looking guys have some good have some good fun out there go ahead and get some new games play them up there's a bunch out much love peace